Okay, we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, first off, thank you so much for uh, coming out and attending today's webinar, tonight's webinar. Uh, I know it's a busy weekend. Many of you were out in the field at various tournaments. Uh, many of you were playing in either the Windy City Classic or the Windy City Showcase or the Scholar Case, which uh, happened over this past week. So the fact that you're choosing to spend your Sunday night uh, talking more about baseball and talking more specifically about the recruiting process really speaks volumes about what it is that you're trying to do and what your goals are. So uh, kudos to you, and it's not going unnoticed, and know that uh, whatever step or wherever you're at in the process, that this is an important evening, and I want to, I want to make it interactive, and I want uh, you all to have the chance to ask me any questions as it relates to recruiting, uh, travel baseball, college baseball, professional baseball. You know, I really want to make it an environment where you feel free to ask those sorts of questions and, and you're excited to learn more about what it's like playing at the next level and how to get there. Uh, so the easiest way to, to walk through this is I have an example profile up here, a player that had played for me in the past, a uh, very talented player at that, great uh, student athlete, a guy that really worked the process and found the right fit for him. And uh, we're going to dig a little bit into what it was that he did that made him so successful, but also uh, we're going to look at some of the different features that are made available to you as a premium NCSA member. Uh, so on the screen in front of you there, you should see the profile of Brian Van Duzer. And uh, every time that you log into your profile, you'll see, you know, what it is that you need to do next. And Brian's obviously graduated. The only thing that he didn't do was fill out a personal statement. Uh, he's a man of very few words. Um, but he did communicate with quite a few coaches, and he did have the rest of it complete. So the first thing that you have to do and the first thing that, you know, every athlete, regardless of the sport, needs in order to be successful is to make sure that you have uh, your, both your GPA and updated transcript posted to your profile. So on your profile dashboard, you'll see right here academics. Uh, once you click on the academic screen, you know, you fill out information, obviously, about your high school. Um, here's this transcript posted right here where any coach, uh, once they're logged in, will be able to access and hand over to their enrollment department or admissions department. Your grade point average, uh, class rank, if it's applicable to the school that you're at, uh, your test scores, and then also more detailed information as far as honors and AP classes. Uh, so, you know, just as... The phrase states, you know, student athlete, you have to realize that as much as coaches want a phenomenal athlete, the student part has to come first in order to uh, get you admitted to the school, in order to come up with more scholarship or uh, aid, financial aid. You know, it's all or most of it's going to be dependent on those test scores and on that grade point average. So make sure that you have that stuff updated within your profile. Uh, the second part of the big four that is really, really important is have video. And you'll see here by clicking on your video tab, uh, a number of different videos that Brian had posted, you know, professionally done one right here from March, 2014. I believe this one from 2013 was one that he shot. And then we had our video department edit. Um, but video is so important. When I speak to a college coach about a player, you know, beyond asking me about the academics and beyond me talking about what sort of athlete, what sort of ball player uh, he is, they're going to, they're going to say, Hey, can I see him? And oftentimes we're not, you know, it might be during the winter, during the spring, a time when uh, the schedules don't line up. They may be from a different part of the country, you know, maybe from the West coast or the East coast or somewhere down South. So it makes it really challenging for a coach to get out on a whim, you know, at, on the spur of the moment uh, to get out and see a player. So video, you know, especially in today's day and age, is something that you can do so very easily. Uh, most, if not all of you, have something similar to this, a uh, smartphone, iPhone, Android, iPad, tablet, uh, whatever sort of device that you have, you know, I'd say 95% of them come equipped not only with cameras but with high-definition cameras. So it makes it really easy to film a video and um, we also have within our video page, uh, we'll actually go, since he has, yes, 
Yeah, since he already has, um, let's see those guidelines. Since he already has video posted, it doesn't show up, but if you don't have your video yet posted, you'll get access to the baseball video guidelines. There'll be a button right there on the video page, but uh, within the baseball video guidelines, it's going to show you uh, everything as far as where to send your video, if you want us to edit it, what sort of footage to send, how to film it, uh, and then based on position, you know, exactly what angles to have, what, uh, what the best footage is. You know, so here you have hitting, middle infielders, third base and first base and catchers, outfielders, pitchers, you know, right on down the list. Uh, even down to your skill position, um, and also examples. You know, know this. When it comes to baseball videos, you know, game footage is great, but it's more for the memories, you know, that big walk-off hit that you had or uh, your first or your last varsity at bat, uh, big tournament that you might have played in. Um, but really what coaches want, and it says it right here, coaches want skills videos. Coaches want skills videos when it comes to baseball. They want to see you, uh, if you're an infielder, take ground balls at short. If you're an outfielder, throw from right field. If you're a pitcher, they want to see both the side and the front view, you, you know, to see your stuff and then also see your mechanics. Uh, so, like I said, video uh, from game footage is awesome, you know, but they really want that skill stuff. Next thing we'll take a look at uh, from the big four, as I call them, and it's found within your athletics part, are what teams that you're playing for, you know, both the high school and during the travel season. So make sure that those are all added and updated. Uh, coach references, you know, who do you work with as a hitting or pitching instructor? Uh, who's your travel team coach? Who have you worked with uh, that a coach can call upon when they, when they go to do more uh, homework about you, when they do their due diligence? So make sure that you include that. And then also down here you'll see press. Uh, have there been any newspaper articles written about you? Were you an all-conference or all-area player? You know, definitely be sure to include that information on here uh, so it builds a better picture, paints a better picture of who you are as a player. Next thing we'll look at is are the key stats. Like I said, many of you uh, attended a recent showcase or a recent event. You know, that's a great opportunity to update your times, your velocities. Uh, so be sure to ask the coaches what those were. Oftentimes they're set out after the event and take that information and transfer it over to your profile. Uh, you'll see here that there's some verification that's being done. You can enter your info here. Um, if it asks to be verified, make sure to put the event and then also include the event in your, uh, it should be down here, in your events page right here in your events page of different places that you've attended. Okay. Whether that was a, a tournament, a camp, which could be like a showcase or a combine, uh, same thing could be a showcase type event and include all the details. If there were write-ups or rosters posted from there, you know, where it was being held. So include that information, not only for the events that you're playing for in the future, but any that you've attended in the past. Maybe it was a PBR or a perfect game showcase or a tournament. Uh, the coach will then take that information, go back to their website, and cross-check it or verify it to make sure that it was something that you attended and also see what their people had to say about how you performed uh, in those different venues. Next important piece, uh, your preferences. Okay, when it comes to your preferences, guys, I know that uh, as you go along, it is, um, you know, it's going to change. It's going to evolve. The process is pretty fluid, and depending at how old, or depending on how old you are, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, or you're getting into your junior, or senior year, uh, you're going to become a little bit more specific in what your preferences are. Okay, but when it comes to preferences, you know you could be as broad as you want when it comes to the different states or the different regions. So I could say, hey, I'm interested in all schools in the Northeast. Yes, maybe no, um, but then you can also narrow that down state by state. So maybe you're interested in going to New York, uh, but not so much in Vermont. Uh, so you, again, you could be as granular, you know, as specific or as broad as you choose to be. Athletic selectivity, uh, that's what you're open to playing in. It's not saying that you're qualifying yourself for certain divisions. That's up to the college coaches. Uh, if you go through one of our evaluations and send in video and transcripts and everything, uh, we could help you kind of put a placeholder on that. Um, but know that within each division, there's also a spectrum. 
So if you're looking at just Division One schools, yes, there are your your top eight schools like that just played in the College World Series, uh, the top 64 teams that competed in NCAA regionals. You know, but then from there you have you know almost 300 Division One programs that some you know have a hard time competing with Division Two or Division Three schools. Uh, others fall somewhere in the middle. Okay, so know that not all Division One programs are created equally, and know that uh, there's an opportunity somewhere out there. Uh, you just have to look at the different schools and and what their roster makeups like. Same thing with Division Two, II, Division Three schools, um, and I'll say this: NAI schools, uh, it's a governing body or a branch of collegiate athletics that sometimes is overlooked. It's one of the few divisions or one of the few places where schools are actually able to combine academic and athletic aid uh, to come up with a package for you. So I've known coaches in the past that, you know, have upwards of 20 full scholarships where at the Division One level, you're only allotted 11.7. So don't overlook the NAIA. Um, don't overlook Division Three or Division Two schools. Okay, don't put all your eggs in one basket, but know that that's a, a very viable option. Same thing with junior college programs. Okay, when it comes to the junior college, uh, you can see here Brian put no for all of them. Uh, he was a high-achieving academic player. He also was a kid that it might have taken him a little, a little time to warm up to the environment. So he wanted to go to a place where he was going to be for three, four, or five years. Uh, when it comes to the junior colleges, if you come out of school being a qualifier for the NCAA, you could go there for one season and transfer out to an NCAA or an NAIA school. Um, if you're not a qualifier coming out of high school, maybe you had a bad semester or a bad year or your test scores weren't where you wanted them to be, uh, junior college is a great place because once you get your associate's degree and you meet those standards, you now automatically qualify for those NCAA or NAIA programs. And what you did in high school really doesn't matter as much. Okay, so I've seen that oftentimes. And furthermore, with junior colleges, um, it's going to be much more affordable than many of the four-year opportunities. So if there is some financial strain or constraints that you put upon yourself, uh, know that junior colleges are going to be less expensive. And at the Division One level and Division Two level, they, off, they also offer scholarship. Uh, so it's a very good option um, to, to be able to go there, afford it, not have to worry about some of the admissions process, and then also transfer out to the Division One, Two, Three school or even the NAIA. Academic selectivity, again, you know, I'm sure that everybody wants the degree that they have uh, to be one that holds significant value. And if uh, you're a high achieving academic student and you want your college experience to match that, you know, you can select the most selected schools and, you know, you could check no for some of the others. Okay, but know also that within each university or college, uh, there are smaller schools like the School of Business or Liberal Arts and Sciences or um, Education, you know, that are going to be grouped. And uh, some schools have really, really good business programs and might be lacking in some other areas. Other schools might be more of an engineering school and may not have some of the other degrees. Uh, so which in, within each of those institutions, there also is going to be some flexibility and some variance. When you're going down your preferences, you know, also know that you can select by how big the school is. Maybe you come from a really small town and you don't want to go to a major university or vice versa. Maybe you come from a really big city and you want to go to a place that's a little bit smaller. Uh, so you can select based on enrollment, you know, what the setting's like, if you're somewhere near a city or if you're out in quote unquote the stick somewhere, uh, if you're interested in just a, you know, faith-based education or school, military background. So there's a lot of different things that you could do in your preferences, which then are also, if you look over here to the right, going to assist in creating a match level percentage for you. Okay. And you could see this off to the right hand side and we'll, we'll take a closer look at that right now. And this is really where the huge value and an NTSA membership comes into play, uh, having that match percentage and then being able to use that information and speak with one of our recruiting coaches, you know, all of whom have college playing and, uh, in most cases, coaching backgrounds and have been through the process 
on both sides of it. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that. We'll take a look at my colleges right here. And see what Brian has going on. It's taking a second to load up. Our match percentage and our uh, coach background information has changed since he's been uh, enrolled with us and since he's graduated. So it's going to look a little bit different. Um, Hmm. Let's try to get back here and see what this looks like. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult to see. You can see, oh, there we go, as we get on here. Um, so you can see the, the schools that's automatically sorted uh, by the most recent activity that's happened, and he's been you know, in college for a few years now. So uh, it's a little bit different than it's going to look for some other people, but we're going to sort, sort this by match percentage. Okay. And what this does is it gives out the list of schools that based on your preferences, uh, your performance level, your uh, key metrics, your stats, um, your academic standing, it's going to take that information combined with the school's recruiting history uh, their roster needs, you know, what positions they're looking for, what positions they're graduating. It's going to take into account uh, any searches that the school has done. So, you know, we'll see here with uh, Augustana as we open them up. Um, it may not show it because he has since graduated. Maybe I used a bad example here. Uh, yeah, because a lot of the guys that um, he had worked with, you know, have either changed programs. Oh, here we go. So here, McHenry County College. Uh, great example, you know, it's a college here in suburban Chicago, uh, but you can see once you are a premium member of NCSA, uh, you'll be able to see the coach that looked at you. Um, this little green active button is going to say whether they've used the program, they've used NCSA within the past month. Uh, it's going to say how recently they've looked at you. Obviously, they haven't looked at him since he's graduated from high school and now he's in college. And then it's also going to show you any searches that that school has done. So that, again, is going to boost that search or that match percentage. Uh, so if he's looking for a player in your grad year, at your position, in your state, uh, with the criteria that match you as a player and you as a student, you know, that's going to bump up your match percentage up here. Um, so I've, I've worked with kids, I've coached kids that have ended up or wound up at schools that they previously didn't know about. Their match percentage was extremely high, so they did some more homework on that school. Uh, and then ultimately enrolled, you know, and committed to that program. Uh, so it's going to show you their, their recruiting history uh, with that school, and we'll actually back out of this and look at a different school as an example. Um, San Xavier. Yeah, so again, it's going to give you the, the coach's information. Uh, the ones that are active, um, but it's also going to give you a greater level of detail about each institution. You know, athletes that have come through NCSA and are now on their roster, uh, similar schools to whatever school that you're looking at, schools that are geographically, you know, pretty close. And that's going to help, especially if you're going to a smaller school, but you still want uh, from time to time to have that big school experience. When I was going through the recruiting process myself, I originally was committed to Illinois Wesleyan down in Bloomington, Illinois to play football. And part of that decision was it wasn't too far from University of Illinois. Uh, it was the next town or city over from uh, Illinois State University. So having those two nearby, I was able to see some of my friends that I went to high school with and 
uh, still get that football on Saturdays type of deal uh, at a bigger campus. So this map provides a lot of insight and, and helps you out a lot uh, when it comes to that. Match analysis, like I said, that's going to show you why uh, you matched at a certain percentage with that school. When you look at admissions, uh, that's going to give a lot of detail about what it takes to get into that school. And one thing I always look at if you go down to the scholarship numbers is this number down here, your average percentage of need met. And what that's going to do, it's going to take the paperwork that you've done, your financial aid paperwork, um, and based on that, this is how often a school is able to come up with the money that you would need to attend there. Uh, so you can see that at St. Xavier that we're looking at, uh, it's about 31,000 tuition. It's about 11,000 for room and board. So you're looking at 42,000 all in. And when all is said and done, um, the average package that a student athlete is going to get there is 22,000 as a freshman and just about 20,000 from their sophomore year on. And what that tells you is that 84% of the time, that school is able to come up with whatever this number looks like for that particular student. Uh, so there are schools out there that are 99, 100% that have the financial resources to be able to help out with that. I've seen schools that are down in the 30% range. Okay, so it's a very important number to look at. That's also going to tell you uh, when speaking with schools, how much negotiating power you have and if you're able to leverage any of that uh, into more financial aid to help get you on campus. Academics is going to list out all the different majors that they offer, um, any other information about that school that's going to help make your decision. Campus Life is going to give you a breakdown of the demographics at the school. Um, where it's located, if you're interested in the Greek system, if they have any of that on campus. Uh, so really paints a picture of what campus life looks like. And then this notepad right here, uh, vitally important. The two areas that I see families really struggle and, and kind of fall on their face in this process is one, not starting soon enough, and then two, staying organized. And within this notepad right here, you can see that you have the ability to add information. Hey, on this date, uh, what's the date today, the 25th, you know, I got an incoming phone call from Coach So-and-so, and once you save that, you'll be able to have an ongoing record of all of your interaction with that particular school. Okay, so be sure to utilize that to help yourself stay organized as you go through the process. Uh, Next couple things we'll look at, and then we'll open this up for questions and answers. We'll go over to the NCSA University. What NCSA provides is what we see at the top there, your path to college. Okay, and every time you click on NCSAU, every time you open up your profile, you should be greeted with a timeline uh, with a checkbox to-do list. So there's really takes a guessing game out of what it is that you need to do next. Uh, a lot of these drills, you can see, are three minutes, three minutes, five minutes, you know, should not take you more than five minutes in length. So if you get in the habit of doing them daily, you're going to be that much more successful uh, throughout this whole game. Okay, so it's not something that you have to say, okay, well, I'm opening up my NCSA profile. What do I need to do next? Okay, so be sure to utilize that path to college. Uh, beyond that, the recruiting classes, these are ones that you're able to sign up for. Similar to this, but a lot more specific. You can see baseball scholarships here, eligibility, uh, financial aid. They're going to be more specific on each topic than this broad overview that we're covering here tonight. Video library, uh, it's going to combine some of the recruiting videos and include um, you know, different things about NCSA, past webinars, um, example videos to look at, um, how to use your profile, similar things to what we're covering here tonight. Uh, so give you some viewing material to look at when you're on those long bus rides or uh, car trips to different tournaments over the summer. Resource library, uh, this is especially, I find, I find this especially valuable for the parents. You know, we spend so much time Google searching things that we're unsure of. You know, you don't have to do it. 
anymore because anything that you could possibly imagine or think about or wonder about in recruiting can be found right here. You know, from the NCAA homepage and recruiting calendars, uh, what's the eligibility center, NAI information, you know, there's information about camps and clinics, uh, health and fitness resource centers. So really gives you a chance to dig in more uh, to the recruiting process and, and read up and educate yourself beyond just the classes and the, the information that's within the rest of the profile. Last thing on here and, and one of the most valuable and powerful tools is College Search Map. And similar to our preferences that we had set before, uh, this allows you to proactively search out those schools rather than setting preferences and hoping that they look at your profile. Uh, so, you know, we'll take Illinois, for instance. I know there's over 90 schools that play baseball in the state of Illinois. So if I just clicked on Illinois and hit search, we should see a whole long list. Uh, there it is, 1 through 10 out of 93 different schools. Well, that's a lot to digest, right? So if I go back here and I still choose to look at Illinois, um, but maybe I'm not getting the Division One looks right now because for whatever reason. Um, but Division Two and Division Three are divisions that might be more appealing to me. Um, academic selectivity, you know, I want something that has great programs. I'm a high achieving student. I click on those, and let's say that. Uh, we'll just stick with that for now. If I search those two things, I bet I'll be down, what, around 30? Oh, down to 18. High academic, Division two, Division three. So we went from 93 down to 18, just like that. Going through this list, I can star the ones that are most appealing to me, you know, but I can narrow it down even further and say that, you know, I want to be an engineer. All right, I select all these different engineering majors and I click search what are there going to be a handful maybe five yep now we're down to six so in the span of like three minutes we just went from 93 schools in the state down to 18 down to six which is a much more manageable number to dig into to look at uh, and to see if it might be a good fit for you okay so use that college search engine um, as a resource for you and you could search coast to coast, you know, north to south, everything in between. Um, but really dig in there, you know. And, and once you're looking at a school, just like we saw before, uh, when we looked at a school that had looked at us, again, you know, research each one. See what they have to offer. You know, here's your match percentage, your match analysis, recruiting, what the coaches have been doing, who's active. If you want to give a coach a phone call, there's his phone number, what their admissions look like, that important scholarship number that I talked about before, academic information, you know, and then take your notes on it. Okay, make sure that you're staying organized and you're staying on top of this whole thing. Uh, if you're interested in the school, you know, they'll get notification that you are interested. You can also contact. We can also contact the school, you know, right here through the email button. So there's a lot of information, a lot of things that you could be doing. Uh, you just have to stay on top of it, you know. So that's the overview of the profile. Um, I've covered a lot in a very small amount of time. You know, at this time, I'll open it up for Q&A. And, again, you can use that chat or that Q&A uh, box I just typed in right there if you do have any questions you know so let me know what it is that you're wondering about um, got a question coming in right now you know beyond the scholar case or Windy City showcase what are some other good events to attend and I'll say this there's two types of, of real events there are uh, the college camps which are held on campus, hosted by the school. Uh, sometimes they might in invite or involve other institutions in. And then there's the showcase circuit. And the thing about each is that they both hold value. Um, it's just really what you're looking for. And if you find a school, 
you know, that, uh, that suits you. You're interacting with those coaches. Uh, and the natural progression is to get on campus. See if they have a camp that you can attend. Okay, if it's a school that you've never talked to, if it's a school that might be a little bit of a reach, you know, maybe attending just that school's camp might not be the right thing. Uh, on the showcase side, you know, there's plenty of things to consider. Uh, I would oftentimes recommend doing at least one per year. Uh, do a similar event around the same time of year. It's a great way to set your goals. You know, if you're throwing 80 miles an hour at the event this year, you know, your goal for next year at this time is 85 or 86. You know, so put some framework around your year. It gives you something to shoot for. Um, but then beyond just the goal setting part, you know, look for events that are going to get your information out there to many people. You know, one ones that verify your numbers, ones that uh, have a strong online presence where schools can go access the information. You know, look for ones that um, are well attended. You know, there are certain times of the year where schools can attend the showcases, other times that are dead periods, quiet periods, uh, that you know going in are not going to be attended by schools. Okay, so you have to take all that information into account uh, when going through it and know what works best for you. Next question coming in. Um, is it important to play for a team? My question is about travel teams. Um, you know, do you have to play for one that goes to all national events or you know, one that might be a little bit more local. Uh, the important thing is play where you can play. Okay, if you're not getting on the field or you're not getting in the lineup or not getting the innings that you need, um, you can't get better, you can't be seen, you won't improve, you know, unless you're on the field. Okay, so it's not necessarily about the jersey that you put on um, that's going to get you recruited. It's you continuing uh, to, to develop your skills and getting bigger, faster, and stronger, you know, and, and getting in front of people. Um, so you can't do that on the bench, you know, so make sure that, that you're in that right setting that allows you to do those things and grow uh, throughout the process. Next question. Yeah, it's a great question. So um, for you guys that aren't, yet into your junior year, you know, how do guys commit and how do you talk to coaches? A um, couple different ways. I know that we all see it, that uh, they're freshmen or sophomores that, that verbally com commit to different schools, and you're like, well, how the heck do they do that? Because coaches can't communicate with them or can't call them. Uh, use your coach as a conduit. Use your travel or your high school coach as a person to kind of set the stage for that. And if a school is interested in you, they should pass along that information. You might be able to see it on your NCSA profile. Um, if a school, if you have interest in the school, you know, do your homework within your profile here. Send the information to your coach or, or reach out to that different school and try to arrange a phone call. Uh, you could tell the coach through an email, hey, Coach so so I'm going to try calling you on Tuesday night at 9 p.m. or at 7 p.m. Okay, and here's my coach's information, my uh, coach I want you to contact, and they can relay the information back and filter it back through him in order to communicate with you. Uh, so you can do it that way. If you call the coach, they're able to pick up the phone and talk to you, but they just can't take the initiative and pick up the phone and call you. Uh, so, again, use your coach's conduit. Um, be sure to update your profile, update the information, um, because you can see if they're viewing your profile, which can lead to a deeper level of relationship. Let's see. Any other questions? All right. Uh, there's a couple others, but they seem to be more personal in nature about specific players. Um, well, if there's nothing more general, uh, we'll go ahead and get 
signing off here. You know, if you do have any questions after tonight's webinar, I just put my Twitter handle up there. Be sure to follow me. You can send me a direct message on there. Uh, also put my email address. Feel free to email me. Um, and after, you know, tonight's webinar, I'll also send out additional information on how to enroll in a membership if you don't have one already. Uh, how to get set up with a recruiting coach if you're interested in that, how to get video audits, um, all of that good stuff. So, um, you know, be sure to reach out to me. Be sure to be looking out for those emails. Contact me if you do need any further assistance or if you have any questions. Um, but I'll, I'll end this the way that I started it um, by just thanking you. Uh, thank you guys so much for attending tonight. Thank you so much for uh being a part of the game that I love so much that I know so many of you do. And, you know, thank you for dedicating time to something that doesn't just impact the, the next week or the next month or the next year or, or two or three years. Um, what you do in the recruiting process where you decide to go to school, you know, that's going to impact the rest of your life. You're going to meet your best friends in college. Um, you might, meet the woman that you might one day marry and start a family with. You're going to get your first job uh, out of college. So there's a ripple effect that happens. And the fact that you guys are mature enough to, to hop on this call tonight, uh, to hop into this webinar, shows a lot of maturity. And it's something that you should be proud of, something you should pursue and surround yourself with the right people and the right tools and resources uh, to make sure that your decision is a right one. So great job on that. Kudos to you. Uh, have a great rest of your Sunday night, and I look forward to watching each of you, you know, continue to meet and achieve and then exceed uh, the goals that you set forth. So thank you so much. Have a great night.